Chapter 11, Into the Mind of Christ. The Feast of Tabernacles of 2013 saw many changes begin to happen that we had not seen previously. The activity in the spirit world since that time has continued to increase as the spirit world anticipates what is about to happen. The anticipation of the cloud of witnesses is mirrored by an increased anxiety in the realm of spirit of those forces who have been set against the manifestation of the kingdom. We can understand that because the commitment of Christ's authority within the sons is coming forth much more rapidly now. For some time now, the enemy has been attempting to monitor, as best as he can, what is happening within the sons. What is happening is pretty simple. This is the time ordained by the Father for the sons to be caught up to the throne of God to rule and reign with Christ. This could sound rather ethereal because everything in God can seem that way until you experience it or until it is realized within you. What does it mean to rule and reign with Christ? What is the first-hand experience of this? What we must understand is that when you read the Word, you are reading as though they were concepts or ideas, no matter how true or creative they may be. Until that Word is written upon your heart, it will remain a theory, head knowledge. We could take this one more step and say that every word in the Bible will have its yea and verily within the sons. The scriptures were never meant to be idle teaching. They were meant to become embodied within the sons. Even as Christ, who was and is the living word, so the sons are quickly becoming that reality as the word once again becomes flesh. Obadiah 121 speaks of the deliverers whom the Lord God shall raise up. This scripture may have had a fulfillment in those days, but the word really points to the end time when God brings forth the sons. Quote, the deliverers will ascend Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau, and the kingdom will be the Lord's. As the sons come forth, ascend, they become the embodiment of all that the Lord is. They are the embodiment of His grace, His love, His word, His judgment, and much more during this time. And they become the embodiment of His deliverance. The promise has always been that within the sons shall be found deliverance. Joel 2.32 And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Obviously, we're not speaking about a physical Jerusalem, nor a physical Mount Zion. We're speaking about the sons of God. Who are the deliverers that ascend Mount Zion in the book of Obadiah? They are the sons of God during this time. What does it mean to ascend Mount Zion? Are the sons going to put on their hiking boots and hike up the backs out of Mount Zion? Exactly what's involved here? For that, we look at Revelations 12.5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne, Revelations 12.5. The sons are being caught up to rule and reign. It all points to one thing. A vibrational shift is happening, and it has been happening. It is time to get rid of the baggage. The whole purpose for the book that we wrote, The Manifestation of the Sons of God, was to address the real jeopardy of bonds and unequally yoked relationships. This is the real baggage that could potentially delay your transition into sonship. The one word which has come over and over again. Get rid of the baggage that has prevented you from living in my presence. That baggage can be equated to the bonds, the contacts, and the relationships of the soul. This baggage also deals with our limited perception or paradigm, as we have said before. God has been reprogramming the sons. We have been in the process of seeing a deep internal work completed. That work has to do with the mind of Christ. The mind of the soul literally is being replaced with the mind of Christ. This can sound ethereal or hard to relate to. But this is what is happening as the cross has been working in our lives. The mind of the soul, 
is being replaced with the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ. What will happen as this comes to completion? Our physical bodies will cease to reflect the mind of the soul, but will reflect the mind of our spirit, the mind of Christ, and the physical transfiguration will be complete. 1 Corinthians 13.12 For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. In the past, we have looked through a lens as it speaks in Corinthians, and we've seen in part. We've seen ministries walking, Mark 8, 24. We haven't seen the whole picture, to say the very least. God is removing the blinders which have been over our eyes, but it has not been a simple process. Every time you go from glory to glory, it is because of the change which has happened within you. A deep work within you always precedes the breakthrough. God has a tailor-made path just for you, a unique preparation, if you will, for each son according to their needs to bring them through the process of being purged, purified, and refined, Daniel 12.10. The sons are learning firsthand what it means to be purged, purified, and refined. This is a scripture that is most definitely being written on the hearts of the sons. It has been the process of getting rid of the excess baggage. You are a living testimony and result of this word being deeply written within you. Where does this great work of purifying take place? Within the mind. We have lived as paupers when God has said that he has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. 2 Peter 1.3 our mind has not been as his mind, neither have our ways been as his ways. Isaiah 55, 8. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. That has been, unfortunately, too much of a reality for the sons. God has been working to bring the sons out of their false concepts and their false paradigm. What is a paradigm? A view of reality that you've accepted through a lifetime of being exposed to this passing age. It literally is a track of consciousness down which your mind travels. A paradigm is shaped out of what your life has been. Your experiences, your religion, your knowledge, all of this has created a framework from which you view your reality. This is nothing new. Why have we not seen the breakthrough of resurrection life? Because we have still believed in death. This must be removed within our thinking because death no longer has control over us if we believe what the scriptures say. This is the transition, the transition from the mind of the soul into the mind of Christ, out of the sterility that exists so much in this age, into the freedom of the sons of God. But that freedom does not automatically come. It comes because there is a major shift within his sons. How we see reality is changing in many ways almost daily. Every time you meet the Lord, your internal view of reality goes through a change. It may seem at first like it's a micro-change, but every step builds upon the previous. It is more than a glass half empty or a glass half full. It is really seeing the truth for the first time, on a level you never walked on before. This has been a huge undertaking by the Holy Spirit to deliver the sons out of a whole paradigm from an entire life that has been enshrouded with limitation and with incorrect perceptions. This work has not just recently begun, it's been going on for a very long time within the hearts of his sons. And the result, the sons are beginning to get free. They're getting free from the bonds, the relationships, the concepts, and the connections, free from all of the debris of this passing age that they may ascend. The sons are beginning to see what a very precious commodity this is, indeed. What has tied the sons to this plane of reality? Their inability to see. This has everything to do with the work of the cross in their lives and the elimination of all the ties which have bound. All of this has been an anchor around your ankle, holding you to this passing realm. But God is delivering the sons, line upon line, precept upon precept. With each deliverance has come an empowering for an even greater deliverance because one release builds upon another until you wake up one morning and realize just how far you've come. You have been ascending Mount Zion, and that in itself will continue to be a deep experience for you. 
Something very magical is happening within you because you're no longer heavily burdened with the cares and the weights which have in past times held you back. You are changing and your vibration or frequency is changing. Your abiding in His presence is shifting as you continue to come up higher. Frequency, vibration. We're beginning to understand that every human being has a unique frequency or vibration. We have touched on this already. Every living thing, whether it exists in a natural plane or in the realm of spirit, has a unique vibration to it. And if you knew that vibrational address, you would be able literally to tune right into that person or entity. It really is that simple. This pertains even to the cloud of witnesses. You think, well, they're dead and they're on the other side. They may be on the other side, but they're most definitely not dead, nor at this point are they sleeping. They're very much alive and very much participating in these closing days on planet Earth. The other side is simply a different plane of reality. The cloud of witnesses are very much a part of what is happening. If you knew their vibrational frequency, like a phone, you could dial it and tune right in. This may sound a little on the edge, but this is the truth. And the more you're caught up higher and higher into His presence, the more you'll become aware of all of this. This is the time and season of Obadiah 121. You're coming up higher. You might start feeling like you are two feet off the ground, but that's nothing compared to what is coming. We're talking about a change of life from what you have known. Isaiah prophesied, Behold, I will do something new. Will you be aware? Isaiah 43, 19. God was speaking about something new that he would bring forth. We know in Christ all things are made new. Perhaps what we've not understood is a change that will happen to the sons during this time. This change is more than polishing up your old nature or getting better health or energy. It's about a transformation out of one type of existence into another. This is not a small metamorphosis. This is a complete shift in your existence. The sons are living the book of Revelations, for they are being caught up to the throne. We may have a lot of ideas of what this means, but when it comes down to it, we are living this 24-7. We are living this reality, and it has to do with the whole change of abiding. It was said of Christ that when he ascended to the Father, that he passed through the heavens and set the captives free. As the sons of God continue rising into his presence, as they ascend Mount Zion, they too are beginning to set the captives free. But not only on this plane of existence, but on every other plane that exists in the Father's kingdom. We haven't yet begun to scratch the surface of what the ministry of the sons of God will involve and entail in the days that are now upon us. But I will tell you this, it is on the other side of this transition that is happening right now. When is the manifestation of the sons of God? Now. It has been happening. It has been unfolding progressively for some time now. Everything is accelerating right now. Almost exponentially a shift is happening. I don't know if you feel it yet, but it is happening, and it's happening to you. The demonic world is being cast down. In many ways, this has already been done, but there is a reality that is being completed right now. It will continue to get more and more interesting because their days are numbered. Satan's days are numbered. The sons are moving in, and there is nothing that can be done to thwart what God is establishing and has established within the sons of God. Change is in the air. People are sensing something changing. Business is not as usual. People are having a hard time putting a finger on what they're beginning to sense. And that's because there's never been anything like this before. And as the word speaks, there shall never be again. Be expecting. God will continue to stretch you more and more. Be prepared to be stretched beyond what you thought you could. Because this is the time for the manifestation of the sons of God.